Welcome back to the channel and today on the bench is my Amstrad PC5086. This is a little uh, XT class uh, 8086 processor, I think it's 8086 processor on it, yeah 5086, um, which I've had for some time actually, it's not been a, uh, a new acquisition, I've had it for some time. Um, it's got a, a floppy drive here um, and we've got uh, sound as well, uh, we've got the uh, volume control, we've got uh, various ports, things like serial, parallel, VGA out, uh, power, and uh, uh, this is a, for an to plug an external monitor in so you can control uh, the monitor from that switch as well, and a, and a fan. Um, on the bottom is where you plug it in, this is remarkably like the Atari ST, uh, where you actually have the uh, the connectors for the keyboard and the mouse uh, underneath and it comes out um, this particular machine I probably did a complete refurb on it not capacitors just literally just as it's as it stood um, about four years ago um, and I used to use it for DOS gaming and bits and pieces and stuff like that um, I didn't have an abstract keyboard with it uh, but what I did have is this Dan keyboard. Now Dan was a uh, an independent little uh, uh, computer manufacturer in the in the mid nineties. Um, I used to put Dan computers in uh, into stockbrokers in central London. Um, I've yet to find a Dan computer system, and if anybody out there uh, has one uh, and they want to let it go, I'm more than happy to entertain buying it. Uh, I did find a keyboard online. Um, this is, is actually an AT keyboard. Uh, but there's a little uh, uh, switch here which says 80286 or 8088 so you can switch it between um, XT class and AT class uh, signaling um, yeah it's a really nice keyboard it's got a nice feel to it it's uh, quite yellow uh, I will do a retro bite on it at some point uh, really lovely keyboard to type on it's sort of mid 90s niceness uh, almost, almost as good as um, the uh, IBM class. Um, it is actually key click. There's actually key click, so it's not a membrane. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I have really haven't to power this on in quite some time. Um, so what I've got is I've got it plugged in here. I've got power coming in. Here's the keyboard. Let's fire this up and see what happens. Will it go bang? Oh, it sounds like it's powering up. Is it powering up? Is something happening on screen? And there we go. And what I've done is I've put an XTID into this. I've got uh, compact flash cards here, uh, which we can put into the back. Um, and yeah, it, it's it's uh, uh, also I think it's also got a, a floppy drive. I think uh, sorry, a, 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 a hard drive. Yeah, yeah, it's got a hard drive, and also it's got the um, um, compact flash card. I believe I can't remember. It's been such a long time since I've seen this system. Um, can you see it? Yeah. There we go. So yeah, okay, let's plug one of the um, let's plug one of the uh, uh, CF cards in. Right, I'm going to plug one of the CF cards in. Again, the CF card here, uh, socket is here. So I'm just going to plug one in. Let's just see what happens. I've got I've got a, a 1 gig and a 512. I can't remember which one had the OS on so uh, this does I uh, did it does it have a hard drive in it I can't remember we'll have a look in a minute let's plug that in that's in let's turn on right. just adjust this there we go Lex on anything on it Unfortunately, my tripod is causing me problems. It keeps on leaning and doing things. So, 
There we go. No, there's nothing really going on there. Same boot sector found. Okay. So, okay. Let's take that card out. And let's put this card in. It's possible I might have overwritten these cards at some point. It's been quite some time since I've really powered this up. At least four years. Something like that. Um, the noise of the machine is uh, quite bad. It's mainly the fan at the back. It needs a new fan, I think. There we go. Some sound disc. Nothing. Okay. Nothing going on. Interesting. Um, it's. I can't remember if I've got a hard drive in this or not. So, okay. Let's have a look. Let's, let's, let's have a look inside and see what's going on. So, let's pull that out. quite like these little XT type machines. Um, um, it's the same for uh, older laptops, older um, 286, 386, 486 laptops. Um, they may not be very useful but they seem to be enjoyable to use. There we go. So what did I do? Um, Yes, there is a hard drive in this. So, okay. So, we have a floppy drive here, slim floppy drive. We've got, down here is where all the connectors come in. And that comes on onto this board. And then that then basically connects into the motherboard. The motherboard is just here. We've got the XTIDE uh, with the CF card adapter. Then, Directly underneath there is an IDE hard drive, and then this is probably an XT IDE hard drive, uh, which uh, won't work with an AT. Um, got eight bit slots. One of them is left. Um, yeah, I can't remember. Actually, I think this here is to control the beeper, not necessarily a sound card. Um, those speakers over here. Um, I haven't serviced any of this lot here, so these uh, two caps here uh, and also the power supply are completely unserviced, so I probably need to. Um, then we've got BIOS chips down here. So let me let me take the XTID out and we can have a look at the board inside. So there we go. Um, so that's the 8086 and the space for the co-processor. Two BIOS chips. Dallas real-time clock. I think I replaced that. This is the cable going out uh, from the XTIDE into that. So uh, that's pretty much it. There's a circuit board directly underneath that, but I don't want to take it apart just yet. Uh, I might actually start thinking about replacing some of these capacitors and making the system safe for long-term use. Um, it's a, It's got one megabyte of RAM, I think, one meg on this. So, yeah, all, there's all the memory. Um, yeah, it's a pretty basic machine, but actually these are quite uh, charming. Uh, they're in a nice small form factor. Um, usually they're quite silent. This fan is a bit noisy. Um, Okay, yes, the power supply is non-standard, and if it pops, then it's going to be a pain to sort that out. Um, there's nothing really can show on that side at all. So, okay, let me put this back in. Uh, actually, that clock chip is at 14 meg, so it might even be 8 meg. This is running at 8 megahertz rather than 4.77, so, okay. 
Right, let's put it all back together again and see whether we can make it work. Right, so just starting it up, I've actually tried taking this lot apart and forgot that actually to take this lot apart you've got to dismantle the whole bloody thing. So I'm sort of avoiding that. Yeah, okay. The It's possible that the uh, uh, CF cards have been wiped or there's something on them. It's possible. I do have a backup of the entire CF card, so what I might do is uh, try it over time to actually get this thing working. Um, sure, I can't take it much further. Um, have I got any floppies? Um, yeah, there might be. Alright, I've just checked and I don't seem to have any floppy disks available. So let's see whether we can get this working. I said she only got 640 meg of RAM. Okay, alright, not one meg. Wrong boot. Nope. It's lost all its floppy drives. Okay. Let me have a quick look and see what's going on. I do remember this was ultra tight inside. This really, really very, very tight. I mean, idea. Yeah, it just struggles to. Let's put the one gig back in. Sure that this is all tight. Uh, you don't need to power this. Uh, there's a, a floppy drive connector on there. Uh, there's, a, there's a little jumper which basically takes draws power from the IDE um, cable. Uh, I think it's pin 33 or something like that. Anyway, um, so yes, yeah, so I don't need to have, have that power. Um, the XT IDE seems to be back into place nicely. Um, Let's just try and get just re reseat this. Yeah. Okay. Jiggle it around a bit. It could be failing. Um, as I said, it has been four years since I've even touched this. Um, so. Yeah. So that is the cable under there. Let's take that out like that. So we have that's the floppy drive cable. Then we have the original, ah, there we go, that's it. That's the original cable, and that's actually uh, soldered into, this cable here is soldered into the board. So I'm not using that. So that's in place, and that comes out through here. I think it was a pig to get, if I remember, it was a pig to get from there. So I had to flatten it over and curve it round and stuff like that. Okay, let's put, someone else is coming back to me. Yep. Let's try again. Got something. Interesting. Yeah, it's sort of capacity four hundred megabyte. Hmm, I don't remember that. I might have had a four hundred megabyte hard drive somewhere, but. I don't think it went in here. I do have the original XT hard drive, I think, because I think actually did. I, I did the first one. And this hard drive sounds like it's clicking away, so it's possible that the hard drive is failing. Okay. Um. Well, whether you can hear it. It's possible that that hard drive has failed. There's lots of noises coming from it. So. 
Hmm. Part of me wants to actually pull this apart and have a look. But also, I know that it was a pig to put together. So, hmm. Okay, I'm just going to take the XDIDE card out. I think the reason I did this was the let's, let's put it back this way. I think the reason I put the another hard drive in here and ran that from here was this was a transfer, so basically allow me to transfer files in and out, and that was the build. I think that was it. And everything was run from the XTIDE hard drive because the uh, Amstrad didn't know about the different size hard drive. So it is possible it is a 400 meg. Right, there we go. Let's power it up and. Really odd, we're getting various. How odd. It looks like the XTIDE has stopped working. Okay. And I just heard the hard drive clunk as well. This isn't a happy camper, this thing. This was a brand new card about four years ago, and it's a. Uh, I hope it hasn't gone pop. There we go. So, so the connectors might be a little bit dirty. amazing it literally it was a brand new card it was one I actually soldered up myself and actually built myself uh, it wasn't too difficult this now back in. I won't plug it back in. Right, got a, uh, I won't screw it back in. Move you back to here. Right, power up again. LED light on the uh, card has come on. The um, yeah, it was a bit dirty. Let's see what happens. Hey, look at that. Brilliant. Ah, oh, yes. Right, okay, so let's have a see what's on here. It's just a, just a dirty connector on the XTIDE, okay? So, oh, we've got Windows 3. Uh, let's see whether we can get this thing to to adjust it. Position. There we are. Menu. Okay, so yeah, we've got quite a bit on here. Stuff I've done. Got a D drive. 
Yeah. Might even have an E-drive. Let's put the case back on. Now, if I remember, this is a pain. in later. Yeah, actually it's an EJ driver uh, for that Windows. Uh, utilities. PC tools. Oh wow, okay. It's been a while since I've used this. Uh, uh, F10. Oh, there we go. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I used to use this a lot, PC tools. It was a. Uh, a, a pretty useful bit of kit back in the day. Space run. Nope, don't like that. Oh, yeah, that works. There's Planet X3. Safi wants to come in. Come in, lady. Oh, there we go. Come in. Oh, up you come. Oh, up you come. Oh, hello. Hello. What are you doing? What are you doing, lady? Right, okay. Applications. I don't know what this is all about. It's such a long time ago. Let's have a look. Um, yeah. CD apps. Okay. TP. Actually, let's go out. Okay, uh, CD, SKR, if you go. What the heck? Hello. <laughs> uh, what's... There we go. Something's happening. Quite slow, I will say that. It's uh, gauntlet. Something's going on. What I really need is an 8-bit uh, sound card for this um, and then work out a way of fitting the um, CF card. And we, don't, we don't have a joystick. Uh, so let's see, ASD, yeah, player 1, cursor keys, press enter to fire, and to continue. Eighty eighty six at eight meg. So we've got a four hundred and eighteen meg C and a, th and a one gig D. Seven twenty k floppy, six twenty k RAM. 
VGA. Uh, yep. Let's do benchmarks, CPU speed. Yeah, it's, it's about right. A little bit faster than a standard XT. Let's try and hard disk one. Benchmark that. Yep, that hard drive light isn't coming in. Oh, it's because the hard drive is actually plugged into the XT IDE. Okay. No sound. No, yep, no sound at all. Oh, this is slow. Oh my god, it's really, really slow. That's really, really, really slow. P E G A. Ah, it's Monty Python's uh, Flying Circus. Ah, okay. Yep. One of the weirdest games ever. Alright, well this seems to work. Um, it needs a lot of software uh, changes and updates. Um, yeah, um, I think what I'm going to do is uh, put this back into storage for a short time. I've got a couple of other machines I want to uh, work on. Um, I do have a compact um, uh, all-in-one, the CDS 520, um, I can't remember the name of it, not um, which I want to get out and potentially try and do things with. Um, yeah, it's A bit worse than what I remember. I probably got halfway through this and just gave up and then bought another machine because uh, it was too slow. Thanks for watching. This has um, just been a, a get it out of storage and see whether it still works. Uh, it, it does. I will do a recap of this at some point. It's a nice little machine. Slow, but nice. Um, uh, it was the same processor again in the uh, Amstrad PC1640. It was basically a PC1640 uh, turned into a small box, um, ultimately. Um, yeah, okay, thanks for watching, and um, watch out for the next video.